Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Writer's Block Podcast. Coming to you live from the Comedy Zone here in Jacksonville, Florida. And we got a special guest in the motherfucking building today, all right? I'm excited about this one because, first of all, I've, I've heard this guy's name and seen him for probably like three, four years now. Uh, a couple, easily a couple years now. All right, but he's he's making his rounds. He's been all over the world doing his thing, and now he is here in Jacksonville featuring for uh, Josh Adam Myers. We got my man Brandon Barrera in the building. Did I say your last name right? Yeah, dude, you nailed hey, it. Hey, let's go. How <laughs> you doing, time. bro? Good. What's up, Brandon? Good, dude. I can't complain. Yeah, it's good to be here in Jacksonville. It's nice to be at the Ramada. Yeah. <laughs> never been to the Comedy Zone. It's at the Ramada. Yeah, bro. Uh, this is the only good Ramada left. <laughs> Have you been to the other ones? Uh, yeah. I mean, I grew up in Fort Lauderdale, so we have Ramadas okay. all over. The place. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. Florida boy. Yes, Florida boy. Uh, yep. Is this your first time performing here? Yeah, you Jacksonville. Been? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. How has it been? What, what are you? What are your thoughts? What are you thinking? I mean, it's just like any other crowd, really. I mean, they're they're really good. Like they wanna they wanna laugh. Um, I think that energy plays an important role in this room, though. Mm-hmm. Like when the room is empty, like it takes oh, them a minute. Oh my god! Yeah, it takes them a minute to kind of like, you know, get going. But you can get. You can get good pops here. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, they're definitely an honest crowd. They'll laugh at what they think is funny, and what they don't think is funny, they're just going <laughs> to... Yeah. Sit there with their arms crossed, yeah, fucking... But they, yeah. But they don't, the they don't give up on you, which is nice. They're like, all right, next one. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that one wasn't that good, buddy. Yeah. Well, we, we know you got something left. Yeah. <laughs> they give you a second chance of forgiving people. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, so, you start, did you start comedy for Lauderdale, or were you... Or were you... No, my first time getting on stage was at Birds in Tallahassee. Hey, same, yeah. dude. Hell yeah. yeah That's wrong. Oh, Birds, Birds Aphrodisiac Oyster Shack. Shout out Scott P. Oh man, Sarah Lamb too, man. Sarah put me. So I was on Sarah's shows more oh. so, um, but Scott was cool too, man. Scott, what year, what year were you there in Tallahassee then? I was there 2014 to 2018. Okay, and got then, it. Uh, I got up at Birds a few times, but I never took it seriously because I was just like, I wanted to get drunk and hang yeah. out. Also, when you start comedy, it's just like, I remember showing up to Birds and then like you know knowing where I was on the lineup and just mm-hmm. being like, dude, I could leave right now <laughs> and nobody would care. Bro, yeah. And then, well, by the time I got there, that you could still leave, but everyone would be upset. Like everyone's like, you gotta we gotta we gotta stay and watch each other. Right, right, and right. Everyone takes a picture at the end. Right. You walk outside, bro, oh, you're gonna hear about it later. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. gonna hear about that shit. I mean those those shows were fun though. I mean they're it was like a nice little like way to like settle into comedy mm-hmm. in like a way because it just felt like a regular show. Yeah. And then when I moved to LA, I moved to LA after college. Uh, I remember going to my first open mic and it was just five guys in a tent <laughs> on the side of the highway. <laughs> and I was like, this is row. A, I was like, this isn't what <laughs> this is what I'm used to. And they're like, no, this is what comedy actually is. This is where yeah. it begins. And I'm like, Fuck, man, we got a long way to go. Oh, open mics and tents on Skid Row is yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah. so. Oh man, I think uh, I'm so I moved to Tallahassee at 2017, mm-hmm. and then I my first year doing comedy, like I started stand up 2018. So okay. I guess when you were leaving uh-huh. was when I started getting up around birds and stuff like that. Um, what you just random like you just signed up one like what year 2015 2014 yeah i've always yeah it was about 2015 um i always wanted to try it i mean i've always loved stand-up yeah. up watching dane cook videos on youtube when they when he used to use uh when he used to create like the stick figure yeah uh, like act outs that would like go with like his bits you know it's crazy um, i didn't know who dane cook was until about like maybe two months ago and which that sucks because the dane cook that you look at you're like, ah, this is nothing. But yeah, back he, in the day, he was <laughs> dude, back in like fourth, fifth grade, like, yeah. dude, I would, it got to the point where like, I was going in at a lunch and like talking to all my friends. I'm like, you guys got to hear this joke. And then I'd recite the joke. The Dan Cook joke? Yeah, and it would get like the reactions that like he would get. I'm like, ah, oh, this is great. Yeah. And then, you know, you don't, you don't think anything of it. You're just like, you just talking about shit you love. Yeah. But then I, I also love telling stories and writing stories uh, the older I got. And um, by high school my cousin started taking uh he started taking classes at the local improv Mm -hmm. in hollywood florida which is now the dania beach improv but it okay yeah it used to be at the hard rock and um he started taking stand-up classes and he told me because he and i came up with youtube together we would watch dan cook videos together yeah y'all around the same age yeah uh, he's a year older than me okay but uh when he got his car he was like dude i just started taking uh stand-up classes and i was like no way i forgot that like we love that. Yeah, you could do and, that. Yeah, I forgot. Like, you, I forgot you could just do that. Yeah. yeah, and he was like, "Dude, yeah, it's going great." Like he goes, "I'm open." He opened for like Sebastian 
when uh, Sebastian, Mascalco? yeah, when oh, like shit. Sebastian was like on the come up, mm-hmm. um, he hung out. He like he learned. He get, took a class from Eric Myers, mm. who is a local Florida legend. Rest yeah. in peace. And uh, yeah, he just he just came up in the scene. He was like the sixteen year old kid coming in, you know, coming up through the scene. And he was selling out the improv on like showcase nights. Like Holy all of shit. our, so it became like this thing. Like at our high school, like all of our friends would like go and sell out the improv and the club would make no money because nobody could drink yeah i was gonna say, yeah, I was gonna say the drink the, the two drink minimum that yeah. night and the other comics would bomb a lot of waters a lot of waters a lot of sodas <laughs> and all the other comics would bomb because like it's not their crowd mm-hmm. you know what i mean like, yeah. you can't play to like a a, a, a group of 300 16 year olds 17 year olds the fact that they could even get into the club was crazy to me i think he like here's like 18. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. they kind of just like let him do his own thing yeah and uh no that's what's his name bruno master de casa Shout okay out he's still out in la doing it um hell yeah hell yeah but I, I just got back from la literally like four days ago and uh, that's what I thought, I thought about the dane thing because dane was at the i saw him at the laugh factory a couple of times oh, he yes, was a nice dude place yeah. yeah he was a nice guy when i met him yeah 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 i know he uh I don't know. He has a special out trying to get an Emmy right now on that shit. Uh, I've been seeing it. It's the one in his backyard. Yeah, I think uh, so. Uh, I just been seeing like they, like they, the the fucking what do they call the, uh, the things nominations, sh- the no, nominees? No, the outside of clubs, outside of why am I oh, not the billboards, the, billboards. Yeah, yeah that yeah, thing, yeah. that thing. Yeah, 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 just had Mark. Yeah, there we go. That's yeah, the yeah. word. It's saying like Marquee. for your consideration. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. I was just seeing that like every day, passing the improv. Yeah, I mean, passing the Laugh Factory, and then just him popping in. I'm like, okay, this makes sense now. Yeah, yeah, I got to yeah. go see who this guy is. Right, right. And then everyone was like, oh, he's probably like one of the most famous like comics of all. I'm like, oh shit, I'm just out the loop. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he's fizzled out. Yeah. It's like, you know, there was like a whole thing with like Louis back in the day. You could like go down like a deep dive. But yeah, like whole thing with Louis like where he stole a joke or whatever, and, and then Louis made up with him about it uh, on his show. Louis, mm. they did it. They wrote it out as like a scene in like the show. Yeah, honestly, was, that's pretty dope. Yeah, you can look it up on YouTube. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and then since then, he's just kind of been like he has his fans, but it's not the same. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. I feel like everyone has their time. So, um, from from Tallahassee to L.A., man, yeah, tell Tallahassee me LA. tell me about this whole ta- what what was going on in your brain, bro? How was it all set up? Where you were like, you know what? All right, I think it's time for me to go take a shot at this shit. All right. So, long story short, my best friend passed away in 2016, mm. and then after that, I was like, all right, I got his his one thing for me, like in the most cliche way. He was like, you got to like get on stage he was really pushing me to get get on stage was he a comic no he was just like we were just all i grew up playing mm-hmm. hockey so it was okay. like all my hockey friends were like wow. really funny guys. Well, you grew up in florida playing hockey yes yeah, what the f- there's a hockey community 17 here? years i played in jacksonville before <laughs> what yeah dude there's a rink around here in jacksonville we have a team yeah you guys have a team uh the ice dogs that's what it was what when the we were growing up wow yeah um so he really pushed me to like really want to get on stage. I remember the first time I got on stage at Birds, I called him right after. I was like, I did it. Like mm. sent him a picture. He's like, no way, how'd it go? <laughs> you know? And then so when he passed away, I was like, all right, like life kind of like hit me. You mm. know, I was like, oh shit, like this is real. You know, like we could go at any moment. And then my whole mentality like changed. I was like, I should just go out to LA this summer. This was when I was about sophomore year going into junior year. Okay. And then uh, I was like, all right, maybe I should, you know, try and test out the water, see what I'm getting in for. I went out to LA that summer. I uh, took a screenwriting class at the New York Film Academy, mm. uh, which ended up, you know, it was cool. I got to write my first screenplay. And then uh, my buddy who was in my fraternity, his cousin is a producer at Big Breakfast, which uh, runs, they produce a lot of like, college humor videos on yeah. YouTube. And he was like, you should hang out with my cousin. Like, he, sh- he could take you on set, blah, blah, blah. So texted him. He was like, we're doing some shit for Funny or Die. If you want to come out, be a PA and, like, just hang out. And I was like, cool. Went on set. They were like, you know, everybody on set was really cool. They shot like this sketch video. They even threw me in some scenes like as an extra or whatever. Mm. It was awesome. That's dope. Yeah. Uh, and then while I was on set, I got to talk to like every actor. I remember Joey King was there. She was like young still at the time. Yeah. It was blowing up. She had just done White House down mm. talking to her like uh, fucking uh, just people I'd see in like movies where like I was just right next to him just chit chatting. And I remember talking to like one of the actors who was like, you know, he's really funny on set. And I'm like, so how did you get this? Like, how did you land this? And he goes, well, I have an agent, but I also do like improv. And I was like, what's improv? And he was like telling me all about improv mm. and uh, Upright Citizens. He was like, Upright Citizens Brigade is where I go, but like there's groundlings. And I was like, oh shit. So then 
I was like, okay, cool. That night I went home. I signed up for an Upright Citizens Brigade 101 class. Mm, okay. And then this makes sense. I was like, I told my mom, I was like, I want to stay out here for an extra month. And mm. she was like, all right, cool. So I moved into an Airbnb with like 13 other people. <laughs> and then I bunked it right next to yeah. uh, UCB Sunset, which is now closed down. But it used to be on Sunset and Western. And uh, I would go like once. It was only once a week. So I was only I was living in this Airbnb every day and then just going to class once a week to do UCB mm -hmm. classes. And then uh, I remember, like, I didn't want to come home. Like, I was just in love with comedy. I would go to the comedy store, like, check out, like, their open mic. I was too scared. I would, like, I, you know, it is because, like, you go to, like, birds and you do birds or whatever. And then you get out to, like, L.A. and you're like, oh, shit, I can't run with the big dogs. Yeah, you know what I mean? Really? There's no way. <laughs> that's what you were, that's how you, so what, how old were you when you were, fit, like, when you had that mindset? I mean, I was probably, like. 19 oh i shit. think i had just okay. turned 20 mm -hmm. yeah okay. so it was my like my first time in la i was way like i was like this, i was 24 yeah so i think my, my thinking of it was different being Your comedy 19. iq is different at 24 yeah the 19 yeah, at 20 years old i mean i was just jotting down oh this is funny let's go try it mm. but then you get to la and you're like at the store and you feel like that energy of the store and like you know also like you start to see things at like the mic that you don't really like and you know they're not good but you don't know why they're not good mm -hmm. like they'd be like a bucket and this guy would be picking out of a bucket, right? He picked like one name and it's like random, right? And then after that guy gets off stage, he goes he goes into the bucket and he goes, wait a minute, we just had a special drop in. It's my buddy Darren. <laughs> my and then buddy Darren walks in. The like, crowd's like, this guy? yeah, the crowd's like, who? Yeah. <laughs> and like all the comics are like, ah, you know? And I'm like, I'm like, well, I can't compete with buddy Darren. Like yeah. I'm not gonna be that good. You know, so like I would go to the comedy store, like hang out, but then I would just fucking bounce. And then, uh, so, cause I was really getting into improv. But I remember I didn't want to leave. My mom was like, you got to come home. Just finish out college. You're two years in. Like, mm. finish it out. Get your degree. Came home. Did FSU. Graduated. And I knew when I graduated, I was like, I'm going to save up. Get back out there and do Groundlings and stand-up. Mm. I wanted to pursue them both at the same time. And I knew Groundlings was, like, a tougher uh, course. They say people are like, you're like, you go to Groundlings. Like, you can fail. Like, they fail you. That's how they teach you. They fail you. I was like, all right, cool. So that was my plan. I'll go out to L.A., do Groundlings. Uh, was that improv or the screenwriting class? Improv. Okay. Yeah. So it was like improv and then it turns into sketch writing, like okay. the higher you go. And uh, so I, during the day I would do Groundlings classes and then at night I would go to open mics with my cousin who was already living out there. Hmm. And uh, yeah, it was just like my whole first like two years in LA was just comedy, 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 comedy on all sides of the coin. I was doing improv in the morning, stand up at night, improv in the morning, stand up at night. And it was trying to take what I learned from improv to stand up and then I would just go to stand up and just eat dicks. <laughs> Wait, like, really you were bombing? You I were was bombing, bombing out there? my fucking ass off. Because oh, I was God. trying all kinds of different styles. I was trying observational, topical. Um, you know what I mean? Like, and then, you know, as we all do, you, you kind of like, you can't figure it out until you do. And then once you do, you're like, oh, I got to do more of that. Mm. And for me, <laughs> that was storytelling. And then uh, I started to climb into the Groundlings curriculum. Like I got to the advanced program and then I started failing. Mm. And then my last class there... Uh, my teacher, Karen Mariyama, pulled me aside. Like, she's taught everybody, like Jimmy Fallon, Conan O'Brien, like Will Ferrell. Like, she's been around since. Put it this way. I think in her class, uh, the way the Groundlings works is, like, they're called the Groundlings. Those are the people who make up the company of the theater. Mm -hmm. They're the actors and actresses. Uh, I think in her class was Mr. Miyagi. Oh, shit. Yeah, he's That's a crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, she's been around for, like, a while. And she pulled me aside. She was, like, the first... Because improv gets a bad rap. Everybody's like, oh, improv's, like, whack. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's too supportive. Yeah. It's not really comedy. Blah, <laughs> no, blah, blah. I get it. But she was the first improv teacher I had that, like, when you would do a scene, she would cut the scene, like, right away and just be like, what are you doing? This is not funny. Why are you here? Mm -hmm. Like, get out. Like, she would... Oh, like make shit. people cry. Really? Yeah, yeah. See, that's not, but that's not been my experience with improv yet. No, I, uh, I, I, I was doing. So I was in thirty and sixty improv sketch troupe at Florida State. Okay, um, just doing like you know the sketches there. Right. Uh, but then I went, I went to TCC. That's where I was actually in school. Right. So I was doing improv classes at TCC. Yeah. In the daytime, and then going to like practice and do the sketches and stuff at night. Right. Everyone was very hella like hella supportive, hella like, you know. Kind of not not soft as of what I'm saying, but yeah. like like ego stroke, you know, like right. encouraging type shit. Yeah. This sounds like a different experience. Like, well, I mean, it was that experience that you had for a while, and then you know it got like once I took her class. I mean, I knew something was different when we started with 16 people, and then by the second class we had eight. Jesus so it Christ. was like eight, eight people dropped because they couldn't handle. Yeah. You know, her, it's like the fucking military her, tryout. Yeah, and I and the way Groundlings works is if you fail a class three times, you're out. They kick you out of the school. 
That's just how it goes. Yeah. So I was already on the cusp because I had failed out of advanced twice. Mm. I had passed basic and intermediate with flying colors, and I got to advance and started hitting walls, which I was doing good, but I just I was missing the mark on like certain things. She uh, pulled me aside one day after class. First time I ever made her laugh, I was like, damn, if I can make her laugh, I don't give a shit about oh, yeah. bombing at these yeah. fucking open mics at night, you know? And so I, I made her laugh, whatever, and then after class, she pulled me aside, and she goes, come on, let's go to a bar. She took me to the bar, and uh, we sat down for a little bit, and she was like, okay, so how old are you? And I was like, I think at the time I was like 22, and I was like, yeah, I'm 22, and she goes, oh, you're young. She goes, you're doing great for like being so young, and I was like, oh, thanks. She was like, she's like, have you ever acted before? And I was like, no. And she goes, oh. Well, there it is. <laughs> like that's she the goes, problem. She goes, "What are you? What are you using this curriculum for?" And I was like, "I just want to, you know, I want to just climb the ranks. Like, I just want to like pass classes and just maybe become a groundling one day." And she goes, "Okay, you can't look at it like that because this is a training ground mm. for your comedy experience. It's a springboard to launch you into other things. If you use it as a springboard, you're gonna have more fun than if you're just like here trying to just go through." And try the to motions. take it like as a as a course yeah. that it is. Yeah, she was like, "You've never taken an acting class. How about you go take an acting class?" And I was like, "Ah, uh, okay, yeah, I don't know. I heard bad things about acting classes." She goes, "There are good acting classes," and she like recommended me some. And then uh, she was like, "What else do you do? Like, how else are you like expanding your comedy horizons?" And I was like, "Well, I do stand up at night." She goes, "That's perfect." She goes, "Focus on that. Like, you need to be like really honing that stand up." Yeah, like, like she goes, "I couldn't do stand up. Like, that's not. I literally, I don't know how people do it." She goes, if you can do that, that's great. It's a good skill. She goes, focus on that. And then, like, you know, try and come back here whenever you want. But, you know, every so often, don't try to, like, be here all the time trying to pass this shit. Yeah. And then uh, I was like, all right, cool. She was like, so I'm going to medically drop you from the class. I'm going to say, like, so you don't fail. She goes, I think you deserve to be here, but I don't think you deserve to go forward because you're not ready. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to medically drop you so you don't fail out. Yeah. Okay. And okay. she's like, when you're ready, you can come back. And so... And did you ever go back? Well, so this is what happened. So she medically dropped me. I ended up taking an acting class. Uh, by the way, she failed everybody in that class. <laughs> oh, so the other everybody seven failed. people... Nobody, the, the other nobody seven. passed. Nobody passed. <laughs> so that was funny. So then uh, I take this acting class. It's going great. But I, I, at that point, I'm really honing stand-up. Mm -hmm. I'm, like, finally, like, figuring it out. I'm storytelling a lot. Like, figuring out that's my voice. That's how... That's my style. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, you know, it's going great. I'm getting booked on more shows. I'm doing, I did my first like club spot, like flappers. Everybody's first club is flappers out there. And then, uh, and then, uh, yeah, I remember that December. It was the first time I got up at the comedy store, did the belly room. Hell yeah. On this show called the C word show, which was run by Jody Miller. She's a paid regular over there. And, uh, I remember just, it was like one of the, I mean, you've done the belly room. It's yeah. one of those rooms where like the energy is so great. Like you Super, just go up and you go, Hey, yeah. and they're like, ah, Super intimate, packed, typed packed. in. I was, uh, I did crack them up. So it's Thursday night. Yeah. Crack them up Thursday. So I did it on a Sunday and it was like the best set I've ever had mm -hmm. to this day. And I remember getting off and going, okay, yeah, yeah, this is what I need to be doing. Yeah. And then I started really taking it seriously and then would hit the road to go do like showcase shows like that were like at the, t like at the Tempe Improv. Mm -hmm. Remember I did that one? Mm -hmm. Cause I was like, I just want to do shows. So I'd go to Tempe Improv come back i remember so uh i'm very close with the people who own zany's nashville okay so uh i hit up my buddy and who's like you know in with them and he was like uh, yeah dude like come out like we'll get you set up whatever i emailed them did my first showcase in zany's on march 11th 2020 yeah march 11 2020 and it was a, at that time it was a showcase show they don't do anymore mm. uh that was called comedy out the yazoo that was sponsored by a brewery uh, called the Azu Brewery, and then basically the audience votes at the end of the night like who their favorite comic was, and the winner gets a case of beer. And uh, <laughs> what I, a prize! And, uh, yeah, I, I came in second place <laughs> oh, uh, to Davy Wester, who's a comedy store regular, which felt really cool because he's fucking killer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember that night, I was like, I cried. I was like, called my cousin. I was like, dude, we're doing it. Like, finally, have a good eight minutes that we're proud of. Like, this shit works. Yeah, <laughs> like it works. Like, this is what we need to be doing. Like, yeah full steam ahead fuck improv <laughs> like this is it and then that night covid hit yeah well you said march 2020 i definitely thought yeah. about it in my head covid hit that night mm. i remember getting on a greyhound bus headed up to chicago to go party for st patty's day with my buddies and my mom called me she goes put on that mask i gave you like shit's getting bad yeah and then i didn't do comedy for like six months 
and then uh kind of had to rebuild when i got back in like that august because then at that time in la everybody was just doing comedy in their backyards yeah. back in the tent on the side of the highway okay that's pretty cool actually. but it, it was the coolest time to do comedy because it was like thing is about la comedy and i don't know if you got to experience this while you were out there if you felt this but like there's only three clubs mm -hmm. there's only three clubs i mean what would you consider it's laugh factory improv comedy store okay that's it yeah i mean you have flappers out in burbank fine if you can get in there mm -hmm. and you have comedy magic club down in hermosa if you can get in there but mm -hmm. i think it's all clean so yeah. it's like if you're not clean what's the point but improv comedy store laugh factory all three great clubs but they're also very selective and it's very like gatekeepy mm -hmm. also it's like very a hostile environment when you show up to the potluck or if you show up to improv lab laugh factory open mic's a joke mm -hmm. you're waiting there in line with like homeless people <laughs> and you might not get in and yeah. then you get in you get two minutes it's like dude yeah. it's, what it's, it, what set up, do? it's set up for you to just eat a dick <laughs> every time yeah. you know what i mean yeah and it's like you know, you go to the improv and then you put your name in the bucket and there's 72 other people trying to get in too. Mm. If you're one of the 25 called, you're already starting off bad because everybody else that fucking hate, like that put their names in the bucket, didn't get picked. They fucking they hate, hate you. you. Don't want to laugh. They don't, don't want to laugh. Be a, they don't want to be participating. Right. So then they waited all fucking night. So then you realize the only way you can get a hold of that room is if you shit on other comics. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's like, That's it's interesting. a very toxic environment, but the pandemic was great because it got rid of all the people that like didn't really want it. Like all these people stepped away from comedy during the pandemic, but yeah. then all these <laughs> other comics, like we stayed and we just did comedy and back, like mics became backyards shows became, you know, at somebody's house. What were the crowds like, like in the in LA this time? Like, dude, it was electric. It was electric. People just wanted to laugh. People were still pulling and, up. And comics just wanted to be funny. Mm. So it was like, I got to hang out and like, finally make friends like everybody had their guard down because it was like oh shit i gotta go to cole's house tonight at eight and like you didn't have to you know what i mean like i was living in a studio apartment with two of my best friends yeah. like, i had the lease like we had a bunk bed and a pull-out couch like, i could have hung out with them every night but i was like dude i want to do comedy i just want to hang out and be funny with it my friends yeah. so it was all about just being funny not not about the clubs and then when the clubs came back you know we all started getting shown love at like the improv mm. and like you know, some people got up at the store a little bit, like when they were doing comedy in the window of like the patio. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was like, and you were naturally rooting for them because you were like, damn, I came, it really felt like we came through the trenches together. Yeah. And then. So the word was getting out about like, like y'all still working independent shit and yeah. then the clubs coming back and it was a different vibe. It was a for, different vibe. Yeah. I remember I went on my first tour in 2021 with my buddy, Mike. Congratulations. And uh, a little round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Dude. Um, yeah, we did a we did a little tour all around Florida. He was like, because uh, he's he's a pretty seasoned comic. He's been around for like about ten years, mm -hmm. and uh, he was like, "Hey, can you sell out rooms in Florida?" I said, "Yeah, wherever you want to go." Because I got a large friend group. Yeah, and so he was like, "Okay, we want to do Tampa, Tallahassee, and Fort Lauderdale." I said, "Perfect, perfect." So yeah. we did Tallahassee Pot Bellies. We did Pots. We did Wow. We did Tampa. I haven't heard that name in a minute. We did Tampa uh, in a barber shop uh, called. Uh, why am I blanking on it? It'll come back to me. Yeah. We did Tampa at a barbershop. Uh, and then in Fort Lauderdale, we did it in my buddy's backyard. Mm. And uh, it was just the best, dude. My friends showed out. Yeah. And I remember uh, every place we went, my friends showed out. When uh, I went back to L.A., I was talking to a few comics. And one of my buddies who's passed to all the improvs, he was like, uh, shout out Dante, Dante Chang. He was like, how was it? And I was like, it was good. And then he was like, how are the numbers? And I was like, oh, I sold 125 in mm. Fort Lauderdale. I sold like 40 in Tampa and then 50 in Tallahassee. And he goes, okay, next time you go home, do those at clubs. Do your shows at clubs. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why? And he goes, because if you want to be in at the clubs, you got to show them you can bring out. If you can draw, you can draw. Like that's a, that's a plus. Okay, that's a definitely, I didn't think about that. He's like, if you can draw, clubs will, he goes, think about it this way. Clubs don't really care if you're funny. Mm. That's like, part of the job yeah that's what i learned is like the entry level like that a, a comedian people are assuming it's going to be a funny day right if you can fill out a room it's way more valuable than being funny he goes being funny is like a plus mm. that's for you killing is for you but selling out a room is what's going to get you yeah that's for them or even just selling tickets in general like if you're funny that's great you'd be the funniest guy in the world if you can't sell tickets you're not getting in here mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's just kind of how it goes. So we have the same showcases. Like, like we have showcases here, a couple locally that everyone's like, okay, they don't understand. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 
like like their talking points are from the stage of being funny yeah not really talking points of getting people in here because right. this is a big club right like i thought this was like a regular size club and it's then i went to feet. la for the first time and then I, when i learned that the laugh factory in real life is like 150 200 people i was like oh this shit looks way different than i was expecting yeah like now i realize how big this room is mm -hmm. But it's different there. Um, let's see. So you're out in LA. You're back here in Florida right now. Are you touring right now? Are you or are you just you I know, was, picking up dates? Yeah, my buddy Dan Carney and I did a tour in March. We did. Uh, so I ended up after the pandemic, and I I would plan a tour again when Dania Beach Improv opened up. I wanted to get in there, so I I got hooked up with a bunch of people. Shout out Rodney Badger. Mm -hmm. uh, Rodney hooked me up with like a a showcase. He was like, let's partner up on it, and I was like, I could sell 250 tickets. He papers in the extra 150, so mm -hmm. we sold 400 tickets. Hell yeah. We sold out the improv, and I've been doing that place. So in March, we did Dania. We did Dan and I did Dania. We did Side Splitters because he's from Tampa. Mm -hmm. We sold like 80 tickets at Side Splitters. Then we did Tallahassee again. We did Proof Brewery. Okay. And uh, in between that, I was doing Nashville again. I did the Nashville Comedy Fest. I was also in Minnesota doing uh, featuring for my buddy Connor, who's up there doing the brewery circuit. And then uh, been in North Dakota, did Fargo, Grand Forks with my buddy Johnny. Uh, which, by the way, Fargo, North Dakota, shout out the cellar. Really, best club in the world. I would have never heard. I don't think I've ever heard of Fargo, North Dakota, until you just announced. Dude, no one, no one will. Yeah, like, no one does. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I'm not even kidding you. That's a spot on the map that I, I, if you would have said it, I was like, I would have thought you were joking, dude. So basically, what happened was living in L.A. Here's the problem: with living in L.A. The problem is it's not the comedy. Yeah. You can do good spots. There are great comics out there. You get in with the right people. The great clubs, awesome. Problem is you don't get to experience the world because california is so far away mm -hmm. so you're not just like hitting the road and no one's really hitting the road because everybody wants to be famous so they have to be in la at all times mm -hmm. so i ended up moving to new york in 2021 uh because i got a good job opportunity where they my job pays my rent i'm a golf caddy they put me in a caddy shack house mm -hmm. i don't pay rent uh and i live right next to the city so I was like, I'll never be able to live next to New York City and do comedy ever again. Yeah, for dude, free. that's a clutch as fuck. That's right. actually insane. So I left. I left L.A. because I was like, ah, I'll, I'll never get this opportunity again. Yeah. If I hate it, I'll just go back to L.A. anyway. Mm -hmm. I was there for six months. My job left the door open in L.A. After six months, they called me. My boss calls me. He was like, uh, he's like, hey, you know, just checking in on you. I want to see if you're coming back. That night, I got passed at my first club in New York. Where? Which one? Comedy shop. Hey. Yeah. Shout out comedy shop. Uh, you know, it's great little like B level like development room. Yeah, but it felt like everything. It yeah, meant so Listen, that's much. What I'm saying. Like it doesn't matter what level it is. You're gonna feel. Dude, getting a veil the, for the, the first rush. time. I was like, oh, I'm never leaving. Yeah. I call my boss. I go, yeah, man, I think I'm sticking around. <laughs> and uh, that was it. But because of staying, like just being in New York, I mean, that's a different. There's a different energy out there in terms of like, you know, most most of the comics are like city guys. They just want to be in the city, be passed at all the clubs, and mm. like that's a thing you can run. But the thing you realize about comedy in New York is like, if you want to make money doing this, you have to get out. Mm. So you have to use New York or LA or Florida for what it is. It's like a, like it's you a said, gym. Like you were saying, like a, a springboard. It's not just like a... Every place that you are at for comedy, if it suits your needs, you just got to use it as a gym. Mm. And, you know, this, this gym may be good for you. But for other people, it's not. So they have yeah. to get out. Austin, Texas is a great gym. I've been hearing a lot about that. People were telling me why well, I chose. I, so I wanted to go to New York first, but I ended up getting spots at LA first. Right. Like, like I was just meeting more LA comics who were showing me a lot of love. So I ended up going there first. And ride that wave. Mm -hmm. Ride yeah. that wave. But next time you go out there, you got to feel it out again. See mm -hmm. if you can get the same spots again. See if you can double your spots. Yeah. Go to San Diego. Yeah, I only did like like I think four or five shows uh, this LA trip that yeah. I was on. Nothing crazy, but I've never been to San Diego before either. But, but. but four or five shows in L.A. is a lot. Yeah. See, I would get like, I, I mean, I was nobody, mm. but like a show or two shows a month. When you were living there? When I was living there, that yeah. was like amazing. Not counting the open mics Not and stuff like that? Not counting the open yeah. mics. Okay. Open mics I was doing every day. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, unless you're past the clubs, I mean, getting shows every night, unless you run your own yeah, show. Yeah, that that's what was the crazy part about. Like, I don't run a show at all. I'm not past to any of them. I don't even know how to start that process. And but. Here's, here's the thing you got to learn about moving to a place mm. after going there and doing a bunch of shows once you move there nobody gives a shit about you <laughs> they love you know you. it's crazy yeah they love you but you're not getting booked all the time mm. and then you're just kind of like there you got to figure hanging, it out from there a lot maybe you start your own show mm. um 
it's just all yeah i mean it's just all smoke and mirrors like yeah you're having a time of your life coming in as like a like just a visitor then you move there and you're like shit <laughs> you guys don't want to book me and they're uh, like no nah, we'll book you in a few months and you're like fuck dude now i'm like, here all right well i'm just gonna stay a visitor for a while yeah. let, let that love for a little longer milk it, dude. Yeah. spend some time going over there go everywhere mm. you know what i mean especially being in jacksonville and like having the pull to like you know you know get people in at a club if they're ever in jacksonville like mm. that's huge mm. you know you, that's the other thing it's like a lot of people have like that mentality of like what have you done for me lately so it's like you're gonna meet so many people in this industry. It's like, yeah, I'll give you the spot. But what do you? What can you do for me? Yeah, you know what I mean. Okay, okay, that's good heads up. Which, which isn't a bad up. thing. Yeah, but I you got to know. Sense. You got to know what you have. Yeah, you know, know what you, you got to know what you have to offer because comedy is like a very like selfish game. Yeah, everybody wants to get to the top, so it's like not a lot of people are gonna help you get there. You yeah, just, you got to find the people that you're willing to help out that will help you. What's the what's like the funnest things you've been a part of doing this, man? Like. Something that you find like, oh man, this is the funnest day ever, bro. The funnest experience. Something we got. Uh, I mean, just like dude, traveling with the but with my buddies, like just doing comedy on the road, um, just planning shit out and just making it happen. Mm. Just be like, we're gonna go here, and we're gonna book these shows, and you do, and then you go there, and the rooms are packed, mm. and you're nobody. You're nobody. Like my buddy Connor, he's in the brewery circuit in uh, in Minnesota. He's just cold calls, emails breweries all around Minneapolis, Wisconsin, Illinois, Missouri. You know, and he's selling out rooms because he's figured out that that circuit, people have, breweries have such a cult following mm -hmm. of people that they just say they're having a comedy night, the whole town shows up. Yeah. So then I got to go and experience that with him. And then, you know, after the show, the whole town's like, come out and drink with us. And you're like, oh, yeah, get fucked yeah, up. You're getting, yeah. hammered with like, <laughs> a, you're getting hammered with the whole town of War Road, Minnesota, which is all the way at the top of the Canadian border, yeah. Canadian US border. And you're just like, this is great. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, if I never get to do this again, it's like, at least you like, have the experience. you're getting to feel like the celebrity that you want to be like at like a very low level. But it's great. You're just like, you get to, you know, and you're doing it with your best friends. Like that's the best part is just finding people that you really connect with mm. and just being able to, the people that you genuinely find funny and then getting to do the shit that you aspire to do like now. Yeah. You don't have to wait. There's no reason to wait. Like, you can just hit up places now. And be That's like, what I did place. learn. Like, been out there. Like, a lot of the stuff that I was waiting on was literally just, like, because of me. Like, yeah. I can do it. Like, I can do it myself. Like, right. that's kind of what we are having today, pretty much. Mm. Um, you post some really good clips on social media, first of all. Before Thanks. we go any further, I, uh, I want to, like, direct people to your Instagram and stuff like that. What's your at name? Uh, it's this? just my name, at Brandon O. Barrera, B-A-R-R-E-R-A. Yeah, man. You have this clip about uh, um, the fucking America's Got Talent, man. Mm. America's Got Talent. Yeah. Tell me how this story went down of you you and your buddies going to audition for America's I would love to do that. I think everybody in the world would love to actually go there and audition for America's Got Talent. That's why you bring that clip up. But Jesus. you being someone who did, what were you thinking about? Yeah, so in high school, my best friends and I, we, uh, we were just like hanging around one day. My dad called me and he was like, hey just saw a listing uh, online uh, America's Got Talent's gonna be in Miami this weekend open call auditions you guys should like go and like sign up yeah and I was like well what are we gonna do and he's like I don't know you guys gonna <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's like, a parent who believes bro yeah my dad <laughs> that's my, a parent who believes my dad's an absolute clown yeah I, you know I, I get a little bit of my sense of humor from both my mom and my dad in like different ways um, but my dad's a goof mm. you know and he was like you know get down there go have fun and so that week, my buddies and I we were like, all right, what are, we, what are we gonna do? And so like we talked about it, and then we decided uh, that we were gonna sing. <laughs> You're gonna be a trio? We were gonna be a trio, we Brandon were gonna sing. Brandon and the Chipmunks, a so, little three style. Dude, that, so America's Got Talent, the way it works is like, you gotta get down there early. So it was, in, it was at the Miami Beach Convention Center, which is about 30 minutes from my house in Fort Lauderdale. And uh, we woke up at five in the morning, wanted to get there by six, and so, uh, we get, we're driving down and uh, I'm speeding. I get pulled over. Cop pulls me over and uh, we're like, fuck, dude, is this what this day's gonna turn into? The cop gets to the window. This is a true story. He gets to the window and he's like, uh, yeah, clocked you going uh, 48 to 35. Hmm. And we were like, fuck. Uh, and I was like, yeah, man, sorry. Like, you know, he's like, why are you speeding so early in the morning? Where are you off to? And I'm like, dude, we're actually going to audition for America's Got Talent. <laughs> and he was like, this is great. no fucking way. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I swear to God. He goes, what do you guys do? And then my buddy's in the back. He's like, officer, we're singers. 
He's like, we're a trio. And the officer's like, you gotta be shitting me. He's like, he's like, what are you guys singing? We're like, ah, we haven't decided yet. Probably something original. Yeah. And then he's like, you know, I used to be a singer. Yeah, that's always that's always a turn, yeah, bro. Yeah. That's a turn. He goes, I all, I used to be a singer. We're like, no way. And he goes, yeah, dude. Like, it's cool to see like you guys chasing after. You guys look young. Like, that's awesome, man. It's cool to see. And I was like, are you gonna write me a ticket? And he goes, I'll let you off with a warning. He goes. Because I know that if I give you this ticket, it's going to ruin the vibe for today. Maybe, yeah. Maybe screw up your whole audition. He's like, a real one. And I was like, yeah, it'll definitely mess up everything. <laughs> it'll mess up everything we've yeah. ever worked for. We actually won't pass because of you, yeah. sir. You will be the sole reason this ticket. And he was like, he was like, at the time, America's Got Talent, the way it worked is if you won America's Got Talent, you won a million dollars, and then you got to get your own headlining show in Vegas. I don't know what it is now. Mm -hmm. uh, but at that time, that was the thing. And he goes, well, boys, you know, I'll be looking for your names in Vegas, you know. And then we were like, thanks, man. He was like, all right, see ya. So then we left. We went down, got there. Then when you get to America's Got Talent, there's like a long line. Like just everybody's yeah. mother, sister, father, like everybody in the fucking family. Just like <laughs> like the DMV, but locked. Like the dude, check everybody. Cast, and it's just people of all shapes, sizes, colors, just like, yeah. you know, whatever. Like everybody's got like some sort of prop in their hand or like some people are just like looking over their notes for whatever their act is. It's just one big just cacophony of just artists. Yeah. And we got in line, and I say this in the clip, this is true, we got in line behind a lady who had, like, a pair of stilts. She was, like, a, like a circus act. Yeah. And then behind us was a guy with no arms and a guitar. <laughs> and he was, yeah, just, kinda, he was just kind of kicking it in a wagon, <laughs> in, like, a red wagon. He was just, like, punting it forward. <laughs> and his arm, he just had nubs. He just That's had nubs. Up. And I'm looking at him, and I'm like, dude, like, we don't belong here. <laughs> Now yeah. it's fucked up. That how, is our, how is our little group that doesn't have an original song ready? Dude, we <laughs> we are fucked. I go, we're so fucked. Yeah. This is ridiculous. <laughs> we don't belong here. I was like, also, how is he going to play? Like, yeah. There's no way. You got. I got to see. I would have to see that. Dude. I would have to see his shit. So then this is crazy. So we were 17 years old, right? So we get to the front of the line, and there's a guy with a clipboard. When you get to the front of the line, the guy with the clipboard looks over, like, all the names, whatever, that mm. have signed up. You have to pre-sign up. And so uh, he goes, I got Brandon Barrera, Paul Stewart, Bryce Doyle. Is that mm. the trio? I said, yes. He goes, it says here you're all born in 1996. I said, yes. He said, so you guys are 17 years old. I said, yep. And he goes, okay, do you guys have a parent or legal guardian for each and every one of you uh, to bring you in? Because otherwise, we can't let you in because you're under Oh, shit, 18. no. So I said, no, we don't. And he said, then I'm going to have to ask you to step out of line. If you can get a parent or guardian down here, I'll let you in. So we call all of our parents. Yeah. My two buddies' parents, they say, dude, it's 6 in the morning. Fuck off. <laughs> they go, yeah. you guys shouldn't even be down there. You guys are wasting time. This is a joke. Yeah. They didn't know. Like, were they in on the, like, the whole, the they, whole Their thing? parents were not in on it. Oh, they are wow. just like, fuck. Okay. Like, they're like, go do what you do. Okay. You have the fun parents. But we don't care. Yeah. My mom was like, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I call my dad. And I was like, hey, we kind of ran into a wall. You know, they're not letting us in because we're not 18. We need, they said we need a parent or legal guardian to come down here and, uh, you know, get us in. To show that, you know, you were, you were, take all full yeah. liability. Of age. Yeah, but we need an individual parent for each individual. Now, mind oh, you, shit. my buddies are that. blonde hair, blue eyes. <laughs> okay. Okay, I am brown. I don't know if you guys can see me. I'm brown. <laughs> Haired, brown eyes. So your dad looks like you? My dad is a six foot three Panamanian immigrant. Oh, what? Yes. My oh, dad, shit. My dad, I know I'm a diversity guy. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm diverse. That just threw me off. No one, no one knows that. <laughs> I am racially <laughs> ambiguous. My dad is an immigrant from Panama, has a full Spanish accent, speaks fluent Spanish. Mm -hmm. That's his first language. Yeah. Six foot three, fat, <laughs> tan, looks like me, yeah. right? Okay. Tan. My buddies are blonde hair, blue eyes. He calls, he gets on the phone. He's like, I'll be down there soon. Mm. Don't worry about it. We got this. He gets down there and uh, he gets us. He's like, meet me by my car. We go to his car. He's like, all right, listen to me. Everybody just say like nothing. Just be quiet. Let me handle this. Yeah. And I was like, what are you going to do? And he goes, I got it. And so this is, dude, this is all true. So we get to the front of the line. There's a wait in the line again or you just walk? Again. Oh, wait shit. In line again. So we wait in line again and uh, we get to the front and uh, the guy with the clipboard sees us. He goes, all right, boys. You know, where's your parent? And I go, my dad's right here. Our dad's right here. And so my dad gets to the front of the line. He goes, I I heard my, my sons aren't allowed in without a parent. Like, mm -hmm. I'm here to let them in. And the guy looks at my dad, looks at me, looks at my friends. And he goes, sir, I don't mean to be rude, 
Uh, him, I understand, points to me. Yeah. He goes, I get it. And then he points to my buddies. And he goes, these two, I don't, I don't see how they could possibly be your kids. <laughs> That's so greed. Right. So then my dad, and I'm like, fuck, like, I mean, no shit. Yeah, like, busted. he was totally he right. On. And so my dad looks at this guy and he goes, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I didn't think I was going to have to come down here today and prove to you that these are my kids. <laughs> okay. And so the guy He's looks at it. my dad. He goes, do you have legal documentation to prove that these two kids are your kids? Like, uh, like who just carries legal? Right. Like, what do you mean? And so my dad goes, he goes, be honest with me. Do you think I carry legal documentation <laughs> to prove that my kids are my kids? Yeah. And the guy goes, fair enough. He goes, boys, good luck. <laughs> and he <laughs> let us in. And then, dude, so when you get into America's Got Talent, there's like a check-in desk. Like as long as like this stage, and mm -hmm. it's just a table of just like people like checking in because they're checking in so many acts. Mm -hmm. So we get to this table, you know, this lady hands us a packet to fill out. It's like one long packet. And it's got like NDAs, um, you know, like you know, address forms, like where you live, what your name is, mm -hmm. uh, and then the thing about America's Got Talent is like they really love for you to have a story. A hundred percent. Oh they, yeah, they really for love sure. something like, that can capture. They need America. something to, to, to for the heartstrings. It's like right. a, like how like how sports NFL draft. They just <laughs> expose guys' worst moments of their family. Right. Like ah, oh, you know, yeah. this guy's mom yeah. died two years ago, and but she came back to life. And that yeah, exactly. That's what's gonna <laughs> capture America. Yeah. So they hand us like this packet. And it's like this, we get to that part, and it goes, uh, uh, "How long have you been doing your act?" Mm -hmm. And then we were just right in. We were just trying to hurry up because we were like, dude, let's just get in because we're, we're, we're totally, like, not supposed to be here. Yeah. You know, like my dad was pretending to be a dad. Like, it was just all fraudulent. <laughs> like, and we're not even singers. Like, this is a mess, yeah. right? So <laughs> we're filling out this packet. It's, dude, I'll never forget. It was, like, this thick. We're filling it out. And he says, how long have you been doing your act? And we said, two weeks. Mm. <laughs> okay. And then, and then it got to the part where it was like, what are some obstacles that you have faced uh, in getting here today mm. and we wrote uh, we've overcome a lot of obstacles to get here today but we're proud to say we're finally here mm. just like very just like generic, generic Big, you know yeah. like just answering the question with the question mm. and then uh, and then it got to the part where it goes who's your biggest uh, who's your biggest uh, like who do you look up to the most who's your hero and we go our father mm. we put our father <laughs> and then we just you know we're starting to die laughing and we turn in the packet and the lady looks at it and then she looks at our, you know, my dad, and she goes, uh, "Kids, you got to be honest with me." She goes, "You're all with him," and we go, "Yep." And he goes, "She goes, is this your real father?" And then we all just kind of look at each other. We, we look at her, and we just go, <laughs> "Yeah." <laughs> yeah. And then the like, lady can goes, you ask that lady? Yeah, and dude. And people are just asking these questions. That's and we're like, saying. dude, like, dude, just let us in. Like, he's an <laughs> yeah. adult. If, like, we're fine. All these questions that really don't dude, matter. Like, shut up. You know, like, leave <laughs> us alone. And, dude, so she looks at our package. She goes, okay, well, you guys need a band name. Mm. What's your band name going to be? Mm. And we didn't know because we didn't talk. So my dad <laughs> you didn't, talk, didn't talk in the car. Didn't talk. Didn't talk in the line. So my dad chimes in over our shoulders, and he goes, no direction. <laughs> no direction. Yeah, and right. I look back at him, and I'm like, yeah. dude, who are you? Like, you're <laughs> just turning into Daniel Day-Lewis today. Yeah. Like, you're method acting. Dude, you're killing it. Yeah. Like, you were meant for today. <laughs> Lady looks at us, she goes, that's really funny. And then she goes, uh, all right, boys, well, good luck. So then when you get into, uh, when you get through that, then the next step is they hand you your sticker, which is uh, on the show you'll see people have like a number. Mm -hmm. It's just like this like long, it's like a rectangular sticker. It has a number on it. It's like a six-digit number. And uh, we, they hand us our number, and then they, hand, they bring you to a holding room. And then in the holding room, it's just a conference center with like all the acts and in the middle of the, in the middle of the conference center is a big large like wooden dance floor like something you'd see at like a wedding okay right? and you know everybody's just practicing their act i mean you got the lady on stilts walking around juggling right oh you that got, was her thing Stilts. Yeah, okay you got you got a kid like doing magic tricks for people like you know you know trying to do like card tricks right then uh you had like other people like playing, you know, their instrument, whatever. The guy with no arms is slaying the guitar. <laughs> Wait, he's like, he's good. just playing Wonderwall. <laughs> everyone's vibing. And everybody's like, ah, <laughs> my Wonderwall. They're like, how's it happening? They're like, I don't know. They're is like, it, give this guy the million dollars. Is he using the nubs or his feet? He's What's, using the nubs. Oh, he's just oh. using the nubs and like playing, dude. Oh, like the shit. way he just had it going, it was just like, it was great. I mean, you know, it was cool. Uh, no assistance. Just him no assistance. Just sitting with the guitar, like clipping the chords, like where he needed to clip them. Yeah. And just like strumming what he needed to strum to like shit. get across what he needed to get across. And then, uh, you know, literally in chairs like this, mm. my friends and I, we just sit down. 
And my dad sits down on the floor because there's no seats mm. left. And people are coming up to us. I vividly remember a guy dressed like a Michael Jackson impersonator. <laughs> he moonwalked up to us and he was like, he was like, uh, he was like, boys, like, he's like, get in there. Like, it's a party. Like, come on. Because mind you, America's Got Talent is also filming the B-roll footage. Yeah. It's the part of like the show where like, before they introduce the next act, you see all the acts in like a room, and then mm -hmm. and then it cuts to like a guy, and it's like, "Hi, I'm Bobby. I'm from Amer I'm from Jacksonville, Florida, mm -hmm. and I do stand up comedy." And then it, you know, it cuts to your story, right? Mm -hmm. And you're like, "Oh, I grew up in Jacksonville." <laughs> sad back music yeah, sad in back the music. arms. And then you go up, and then you murder. That, yeah. That's how they film it. Yeah. So they're filming all the B roll footage to see like who they're gonna get. Like they're probably filming like the guy with no arms. Like, mm -hmm. how did you learn how to play guitar with no arms? And he's like giving them a whole story, and we're just sitting watching, like cr like with our arms crossed, because we're like. Again, we're here for a joke. <laughs> yeah. This is just a long, played-out joke. Yeah. At this at this point, 9 o'clock in the morning, we've been up for four hours, and we're dead tired. <laughs> My dad is on the floor just, like, hanging out. Yeah. He brought us a lunchbox. We're all eating, like, Nature Valley bars, just getting crumbed everywhere. <laughs> Michael Jackson impersonator comes up to us. He's like, come on, boys, get in there. Everybody's having a good time. And we're like, no, we're come good. On. And then he's like, what do you guys What do you guys do? And we're like, oh, we sing. And then uh, and he's like, oh, it's great. Like, let's see something. And, and then my buddy PJ looks at him and he goes, now's not the time. Try to, <laughs> try to save our voices. And, yeah. And uh, the guy's like, all right, cool. No We're problem. not warmed up yet. Dude, I remember like uh, the social media person for America's Got Talent came up to us. He's like, hey, you guys mind like, getting into a picture? Like, we want, we're taking pictures of like, some acts. Yeah. And they took a picture of us. And the, the guy was like, what do you guys do? We're like, oh, we're a boy band. And he was like, oh, I love that. They posted us to their Twitter. <laughs> They posted this to their Twitter, and it, it said, I'll never forget it, it said, from uh, tallest women on earth uh, to uh, America's hottest boy bands, my AGT Miami has it all. <laughs> yo, I have the picture. I'll send, it, I'll send it to you. Yeah, and, do that. I'm going to put it in the video of the yeah, story. So uh, after that, uh, we're kind of just sitting there, and then, it, dude, it took so long. Mm. I remember we were waiting for, like, a while, and then, like, maybe, like, three hours go by. And a lady comes out with like a like a megaphone, mm. and then she says our number. She's like, uh, contestant number six seven nine seven. Please make your way over to this door. And so we're like, oh, that's us. We get up, and uh, you know, as we go uh, to stand up, my dad, six foot three, large. He's like over three hundred pounds, mm. Panamanian man. <laughs> he goes to get up off the floor. When he does, he rolls snaps his ankle oh shit snaps his ankle starts writhing in pain and we're like what what just happened he goes dude i think i just broke my ankle yeah and we're like dad right like, now this is our mo like we waited all day for this like you <laughs> got us here and like how are you going to do this to us yeah. as we're about to fucking go in and do it and he's like he's like bro Fuck, and but we can't stop laughing. Mm. We were dying laughing. Like we look like a psycho family. Like, yeah. We were like, "Oh my god, it like this a, is <laughs> hilarious!" Like, how are you going to do this? Like now, the dad with three, but it's like like uh, like Malcolm in the Middle right. <laughs> reverse. So my dad, he's like freaking out. He's like, "Dude, like I got to get a paramedic. Go and do the audition. When you come out, we're gonna go to the urgent care. I gotta get I gotta get this wrapped up." Mm. Like mind you, I'm downplaying it, but he was in a lot. He was of fucked up. Yeah, he was like tears coming out of his eyes. And I was like, Dad, we're going to do it for you. We get into the room. And when you get into the room to go audition, it's not the celebrity judges. Uh, it's, who, it's like different people than that's go, on TV? You got to go through a producer first. Oh, shit. Yeah. So okay. they, the producer passes you to the live audition. Got it. That's okay. what gets taped. Mm. And so we get into that room, and uh, it's just one dude. <laughs> and he's fucking seen it all. And he's, he's been there all day. He's having the worst time of his life because he's got to <laughs> look at so many different stupid acts. And he gets to us, and uh, he has our packet in there. And uh, he looks it over for a little bit, slipping through it, and he goes, okay, no direction. And we're like, yeah. Mm. And he goes, funny. Um, okay, what are you guys going to sing for us today? And then that was one thing we never talked about. <laughs> we never decided. So, so, so you knew you were a boy band. We were you knew we were, were a boy group. band. We knew our name was No Direction. We didn't know we were going to sing. <clears throat> so we get, we're, we're like looking at each other, and then I just go, we're going to sing Believe by Cher. <laughs> okay. Which is a song that I know yeah. very well. My buddy, the group? My buddy Bryce and I, it's our favorite song. Okay, okay. We love that song. My buddy PJ, he leans in, he goes, I don't know the words to that <laughs> song. And we're like, okay, so what are you going to do? And he goes, I'll just break dance like in the yeah. background. 
And so we were like, "This sounds chaotic." We were like, <laughs> "We were like, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. dude, this is the most chaotic." <laughs> so, so okay, we go, uh, yeah. I think the guy's name was like Phil. We go, Phil, uh, we're gonna we're gonna do Believe by Cher. And he goes, yeah. "Amazing." Uh, do you have a CD with the song on it? Mm. And I said, no. Can we play it on our phones? He goes, no, we don't have an aux cord. You're mm. just going to have to acapella it. And I was like, okay, give us like a second. So I looked at Bryce and I go, okay, PJ, you stand in the back. You dance. Bryce, we're going to go tit for tat. Like <laughs> okay. Every 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 line break will switch. You're right? going to back and forth? We'll go back and forth. So, <laughs> so... So, uh, so this, so we go, all right, well count, count us in Phil. He goes, all right, one, two, three. And then I started and I start shaking my hips and I go, I go, no matter how hard I try. Right. And then Bryce took over. He goes, you keep pushing me aside. And then I go, and I can't break through. And then Bryce goes, there's no talking to you. Right. And then we get to the part where it's like, it starts to build up and I go, it's so sad that you're leaving. Oh, and then Bryce goes, it takes time to believe it. And then I forgot that PJ was dancing in the yeah. background. And at the corner of my eye, I caught him and I looked back and he's just <laughs> like, just like not even dance. I mean, he's just throwing waste and just like, you know, acting like a fucking fool. And I'm like, no. I, dude, I, I broke. I oh, see him do shit. that. I go, <laughs> I go, Phil, Bro. cut, cut it. We got to restart. Oh, shit. He starts yelling at us. He's like, you can't do that. Oh. I'm like, dude, I don't know if you're seeing this. I didn't know he dances like this. Yeah. That's ridiculous. <laughs> we have to restart. Phil doesn't know this has never been done before. Phil's like, <laughs> whatever you're doing, just keep doing it. And I was like, cool. And he goes, just take it from the hook. And I was yeah. like, perfect. And then I go, one, two, three. Do you believe in life after? We bombed. Bombed. Bomb, what? bomb. Did, did Phil give you a score? Did Dude, he, like, he just looked at us and he goes, uh, great, we'll call you in January. <laughs> Let you know what happened. Yeah. Right? So we get out of the room. Now oh, my dad, man. my dad is with a paramedic. He's on a stretcher. <laughs> and his leg is like up, like bandaged up. Yeah. I'm like, dad, like, how you feeling, buddy? And he goes, what happened in there? And I was like... We're going to Vegas. <laughs> like, ah, we did it, boys. We're, we're go going to Vegas. We're going by ourselves. Not yeah, easy, dude. but we're going to Vegas. And then, uh, yeah, man, we had to get my fucking dad's like, ankle all, you know, set up and shit. Yeah. And then uh, I remember just like at the end of the day, I was like, dude, you should have been a fucking actor. Like, yeah. You were great out there. And he Bruh. Was, like, he was like, that was the best part of the day. It sounded like your dad, like at this point, he was like uh, like in a movie or some type of game quest where yeah. there's a character that shows up that you need to help get you he to was the next like, level. Get you there. But then they can't make, they can't, for some, well, whatever happens, they can't ever get inside the main room. It's like, all right, go on your own now. This is your quest. Dude, snap, yeah, snap his ankle, roll it. Because he just has bad ankles. So you yeah. know, like, you break your ankle once, like, it's just always, you're constantly rolling it. That's mm. just what happened. And, uh,. <sighs> But yeah, dude, I remember we got a, so like, you know, I think that was in like October and then like in January, my dad puts us all like, uh, in like a group message and he's like, uh, he's like, Hey boys, got bad news. Uh, America's got talent just emailed me cause they used his email. Cause he oh shit. Email. Yeah. He goes, uh, America's got talent just emailed me. I don't think no direction is going to be. <laughs> and then, uh, it was an email that said, thank you for auditioning for America's got talent after, yeah. you know. After consideration your consideration and all that, so many acts. The rejected email. And I've they, gotten plenty of and those. They rejected us. I've and, gotten plenty of those. And, but it was great because it was like the win. the The, the day was not about the audition. Yeah. The audition was probably like our least favorite part about it. Mm -hmm. Everything else was amazing. Listen, like, y'all's mindset to be together despite having no idea what the fuck was gonna happen, and just like everybody else believing in us. Yeah, like my dad blindly too. Nobody the, else saw y'all perform either. Dude, the cop, the cop <laughs> believed in us. My dad was yeah. like, he believed in us enough to get us through. Everybody but Phil, dude. Everybody but Phil, and then you know, like Michael Jackson believed in us. <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, impersonating, like, but moonwalking over there to y'all was the shit. I dude, learned it. It was just like the whole experience of the. Oh, day shit. which i didn't even include this in the story but i remember before we even called my dad we found a homeless guy on the side of the street mm. and uh, i remember going up to him and he you know i was like hey man uh will you 
come with us to pretend to be our we tried to get a homeless guy to pretend to be our yeah, dad to get you got to, something because we didn't think my dad would say yes yeah what did he did he look like did he look more like you and the boys or he was like a spanish homeless guy from miami okay and he was just like okay. hanging out and then dude he went on like this rant he goes bobby i cannot do that I, I, you know the government they find me they squash me like bug mm. and like, <laughs> okay. we're like, right, to we were gonna give you some money he's but talking right. like he's been through some shit yeah and then uh i remember the last thing he said to me was he made fun of my haircut because at the time I had a comb over and he goes, oh, shit. Need a haircut, Bobby. I didn't fucking you had the Trump, you had the Trump comb over, like, you had the fucking, Trump oh God, yeah. no. And like the side part, you know, <laughs> shout out living in the cut in Tallahassee. They got me right. Oh my um, God. But bro. yeah, yeah. I remember, and then we called my dad, but yeah, that was, um, yeah, I've been trying to work out that story on stage because like yeah. uh, it's so long, but it's yeah. such a fun listen. But no, nah, that was amazing. There, there are characters in there that that just fuck it. It's all it's yeah, hilarious, yeah. bro. It Whatever fun, you yeah. figure it out, I can't wait to see it. Thanks, bro. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we got Brandon Barrera here in Jacksonville at the goddamn Comedy Zone. All right, one of the funniest, hardest working men out in the game right now. Go to social media, man. Check him out one more time. What's your Instagram, Twitter, yeah. at, YouTube? Uh, at Brandon O'Barrera uh, on. Instagram and then uh, TikTok is at Barbara underscore 88. Uh, that's pretty much all I'm at. And then YouTube, you just look me up, you'll find me. For sure. So, yeah. uh, I appreciate you making time for the show, man. Thanks I appreciate you me. coming through, bro. You yeah, were you were awesome. a great guest, man. Yeah, man. Thank uh, you. It was good to hear about you. I didn't even mention, man. I, like I said, my boy Amir told yeah. me about you like years ago, bro. Well, when I was in, well, what's up? That that tour, I went on that first tour. Yeah. In 2021, when I did Pop Bellies, that's mm -hmm. when I met Amir. He came to my show. Real? Oh and shit. He told me about you. Yeah. He was like, you got to meet my buddy. Oh Bobby. man, that's crazy. And then I think we followed each other like from then on. Yeah, yeah. bro. It's crazy how. It all worked out man now like what three two three years later yeah. getting to see you here at the home club man that's the thing about comedy man it's such a small big world you know what i mean like once you get in once you really get into it mm. like it's so everybody knows each other mm. so you're you know so many people that like you don't even know you haven't even met yet wait like people you might look up to and then they'll be your best friends by next year so yeah. it's like Keep doing what you're doing, dude. This shit happens out of nowhere, man. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that, man. Very kind, bro. Um, like I said, you can always check us out, man. Make sure you're in Apple, Spotify, Google, iHeart, Pandora, the Writer's Block Podcast. Uh, just type Bobby Brown Jr. if it doesn't pop up. Because fucking Neil Brennan made a podcast called The Blocks Podcast. Oh, I saw that. <laughs> so now he's all in the damn algorithm when you yeah, try yeah, to search yeah. my name and shit. Oh, man. It's probably but, good so, for you, though, when people yeah. search blocks like you yeah. probably pop up like right honestly there. like i started this podcast like maybe two and a half years like when you like when you were talking about march 2020 COVID and stuff i started this january 2020 yeah so at first i wasn't coming up but honestly after like maybe like last year or so yeah. when everyone like random phones it pops up a lot higher now that's great so that's exciting yeah um like i said we appreciate y'all man until next time and uh we gone